Hey there! In this video, we're going to talk about a theorem which has a couple different names depending on which te textbook you might be reading. So one of the most common names is the sandwich theorem. It might also be called the squeeze theorem or the pinching theorem depending on who you ask. So all three of those basically mean this theorem that we're going to talk about. So when we talk about this theorem, we're talking about a geometric argument to determine the limit of a function. So we're not going to get too far into geometry here, but basically what's happening is you have three functions involved. The function you want to find the limit of, which apparently is rather difficult for whatever reason. So what you do is you find two more simple or simplified functions, which squeeze the function you want in between. So let's read it and then we'll talk more about it. So it's called the sandwich theorem because it refers to a function f, this is the function you're interested in, whose values are sandwiched between the values of two other functions, g and h, that have the same limit l at a point c. Being trapped between the values of two functions that approach l, the values of f must also approach l. Alright, let's back up. So uh, I want you to envision your favorite sandwich. I'm just going to go with peanut butter and jelly. So it's peanut butter jelly time now. So you have your two sandwich breads. So Think of H and G in the picture as being the two outside functions. Your peanut butter and jelly have to go inside your sandwich, okay? You can't start with a messy sandwich because you know it's going to end up a mess. So you're going to start off with a nice clean sandwich. You have your breads on the outside. Peanut butter and jelly is what part you really want to worry about because that's the best part. So what you're going to do is you're going to squeeze the peanut butter and jelly between the two pieces of bread. And it's going to stay in there, okay? You're not going to squeeze it too far. Anyway, <laughs> so your function h and your function g are doing that to your function f that you really want to know about but f and g i mean h and g are much more simple or easy to understand easier to interpret we can find the limit of those two functions but because your function is stuck in between whatever h and g approach whatever their limit is because your function is stuck in between it also has to approach that limit so we can write this theorem out in whoops uh nice way right here. So here's the theorem. If your function f is stuck in between, it's bigger than function g, but smaller than function h, it's stuck in between for all x's around the x you're trying to approach. Who cares about outside of this uh, small interval? But somewhere in this small interval, your f has to be stuck in between the two functions. Um, and then c is the number you're trying to let x approach. So as x approaches c, let's go back up to our picture here. So as x approaches c, we follow the curve g, and we approach this point here. If we follow the curve h, we approach the same point. Because f is stuck in between, as, f, as we follow f, approaching c for our x value, we also approach that point because it's stuck in between. But look at how crazy f is. So f is usually something that's very hard for us to understand in terms of the tools that we've learned so far for limits. But h and g are much cleaner, simpler functions, so we're able to work with those better. So what the theorem says, if your function f is stuck between g and h for all x's around whatever you're trying to approach, then if the limit of g as x approaches c is equal to the limit of h as x approaches c, and we call that limit l. So if g and h, if they come in and they approach the same point l, but f is stuck in between, f also has to approach that point l. And that's the, the sandwich theorem and how it works. So what I want to do is I want to show you an example of what we might ask you to do. And this is actually from our homework. So given a function u, notice we don't actually give you u. We want you to straight up use the theorem or sandwich theorem. So given a function u that satisfies this equation, notice u is in between two functions. So we have function that is greater than, so this function right here is less than u, u is greater than that. So we can think of this as being our g of x. And then over here on the right side, we have a function that is always bigger than the one we're interested in. We're going to call that our h of x. Okay, so u is stuck in between g and h for all x's except for 0. Well, that's okay. It doesn't have to be, it's in our theorem, it said except possibly the value itself. So it doesn't have to be true at 0. But all around it, it is. Remember, one point does not mess up a limit. What messes up a limit is what it approaches. It has to approach 
all the points around what you're trying to do. Anyway, so to find the limit of u, remember we don't know what u is, we're going to have to use the two functions that we're bounded by. Now, hopefully these two functions approach the same limit. If the limit of g of x is equal to the limit of h of x, remember we're interested as x approaches zero, if this is true, then we're going to know the limit of u because u is stuck in between. All right, so let's do this. Uh, the limit as x approaches 0, so our g of x is the one on the left, at least that's what I'm calling it, 1 minus x squared over 4. And we're also going to do the limit as x approaches 0 for the upper bound, or the bound on the right, 1 plus x squared over 2. So how do we take the limit? Well, remember, we've talked about this. This is basically a polynomial, both of these. They have a fraction, but the fraction is a number in the denominator, not an x. So this is just a normal polynomial. According to what we've learned so far, we can just try and plug it in. So let's just try and plug x equals 0 in for the x. That means we'd have 1 minus 0 squared over 4. Does that give us an answer? If it gives us an answer, then we found our limit. If there's an issue, if it's undefined or an indeterminate form, 0 over 0, then we have a problem. But let's work it out. 1 minus 0 squared is 0. 0 divided by 4 is still 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. We found a limit. So g of x, as x approaches 0, equals 1. Let's try the other one. Again, this is a polynomial on the right, so we're just going to plug 0 in and see if it works. It should. Nothing weird is going on here. Again, 0 squared is 0. Divide by 2, and that's still 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. We got a limit. So, the function that bounds our u below and our function that bounds u above, they both approach a limit and they're equal to each other. So, that means by the sandwich theorem, or the squeeze theorem, or the pinching theorem, so by the sandwich theorem, the limit as x approaches 0 for our function, which is stuck in between these two, has to also go to 1. So if you are being squeezed between two hard places here, that's what's happening. We have g and h. They're squeezing f between them. Then if g and h go to the same spot, then u, the middle, also has to go to the same spot. And that's what happens. That's how the squeeze theorem works. So it's a great theorem. It's actually very useful. They use it a lot in more advanced calculus classes. So hopefully you get the idea. This is the kind of question you might see in this class. Good luck, study hard, and I'll see you in the next video.